Why is no one talking about this? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, if you're new here, and I'm so excited for today's video. You know what it is, you've been waiting for it. I have been loving so much that you guys have been requesting it, tweeting me, DMing me, like, I love it so much, and I'm really excited to give this video to you. I've been working really hard on it all week. It's gonna be well worth it, I promise. I'm not only going to be giving you my personal thoughts on the video, scene by scene, but I'm also going to be covering all of the fan theories and rumors that are out there, including the infamous 15 Taylors theory, as well as shutting down some of the weirdest and incorrect theories that are being passed around the internet right now because ain't nobody got time for that. Thank you so much for all of the social media love you have been showing me lately. You guys have gotten me to, I think, 1,800 followers on Instagram, and now I'm finally over 1,000 on Twitter, so thank you so much. And I actually started a Facebook page. So yeah, you can search for me on Facebook. I need to add things to it. Follow me on Facebook now. Moving on. Let me shut down one of the biggest rumors or stories that's out there online about this video. Apparently, a lot of people are claiming that Delicate Music Video is a blatant ripoff of some perfume ad for Kenzo. And to those people, I say, what you talking about? What is Kenzo? Apparently, it's a clothing company. Didn't know that. Wanna know what I did know? That Taylor Swift is one of the biggest, most popular pop stars on the planet. So why are we even comparing the two? One is a clothing brand, the other one's like 50% of the internet. Okay, well, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. The only thing that's similar in my mind is that they're dancing a little too crazy for the outfits that they're in. But that's it. Honestly, in the Kenzo commercial, she's dancing like she's kind of been possessed by some other worldly spirit. But in the delicate music video, Taylor's dancing like a little cutie and being her true self. I mean, if the Kenzo ad was going for the vibe that she had been possessed by a demon or something like that, I think they nailed it. Don't get me wrong. For a commercial, I think they did a pretty good job on that one. But other than that, nope. I just think articles that are trying to claim this are just trying to use Taylor Swift's name to get clicks and views. Also, this video gave me a lot of great Gatsby feels. Did anyone else pick up on that? Now, this has happened before in the Reputation album. In this video, she's wearing a gorgeous flapper dress that's quite expensive, mind you. And in This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things, she says she was feeling so Gatsby for that whole year. So that to me is just like a fun little cross-reference. By the way, did you notice that Taylor was giving us some hints at the Delicate music video before it even came out? When she announced that that video was coming, she showed her hands on the camera with a small folded up yellow note announcing that it was coming. Guess what made an appearance in the video? And I think that's just so cute and crafty of her. Also, Mr. Joseph Kahn was playing around with fans before the video was announced saying things like, oh, it's gonna be full of robots. And he's got kind of an interesting Twitter presence. I personally enjoy the stuff that he says, but not all Swifties agree. But that's my opinion. I like following him on Twitter. He makes me laugh. When Joseph Kahn spoke with E! News about the video, he said, it's going to be unexpected and it's going to be grand. I can't get into too much detail. The need is love and the expression of it. It's not about flowers. People have been sending me ideas and generally it's like flowers or pink dresses and blue skies. And those are all the things you'd think you'd want in a video, but they wouldn't fill what you need out of a song like that. So I think I have a plan here to address that, but it's completely unexpected. Unexpected is definitely the perfect word to describe it because we did not see this video coming at all in such a good way. Okay, let's get into the decoding, shall we? The video starts off on her face where she looks sad and bored and zoned out. Freaking beautiful, but you can see the sadness in her eyes. The cinematography is on point, by the way, throughout this whole video. If you'll notice as the camera pans out from her face in that very first shot, it's only when the camera light flashes in the background that Taylor Swift snaps back to reality and she forces the fakest of all fake smiles as she talks to the reporter. We then finally see that she's on a red carpet surrounded by fans and security. Then we see the torso of a man in a black suit walk by and hand her a folded up note. So exciting. Then we're in the lobby watching Taylor Swift walk through and having everyone stare at her in amazement, jaws dropped, iPhones out. Clearly they can't get very close to Taylor because she is literally in a box of security guards. And then the one chance she gets to be herself by taking some selfies with some fans, some random guy comes up and tries and grabs her from behind before she's ushered off by her security team. If you'll notice, she genuinely looks so happy when she's chatting and taking pictures with her fans. And then her bubble is burst by this crazed fan who comes and tries and assaults her from behind. I definitely think that this is a reference to the DJ groping case that happened to her last year. In this four person security guard box that walk with her 
her and follow her every move, it seems like she's trying to test the limits of how much they do follow and mimic her. She comes to a quick halt and then she walks backwards, kind of looks around and then walks forwards again to find out that yes, clearly they're following her every step. Kind of upsetting to see that she can never be alone, you know what I mean? Next we see Taylor Swift in what looks like a bathroom, holding up the folded note. We see her kind of like play with the note and it begins to glitter. I believe that since we see her fiddling with the note at this point, that she has read the note and that she knows what it says. And that this is why the video takes a sudden turn. We see her kind of like look sad in the mirror, like she's kind of like longing for something. And then she graces us with the most amazing faces we have seen her do to date. I love that Twitter and the Taylor Swift life have turned these into so many memes. Oh, it's so good. It makes me very happy. And now here's where it gets interesting. Three girls walk into the bathroom, walk right by her, and they don't see her at all. And Taylor's kind of like, hey, oh, that's kind of weird. Why didn't they notice me? And, and then we see her look into the mirror and get very, very confused when she doesn't see her reflection anymore. Then we see a shot of the folded up note as it continues to glitter, which means that this note is magical in some way. Clearly, she's become invisible and she's trying to figure out how invisible she really is. Taylor then goes in front of her bodyguards, starts trying to get their attention, and is kind of waiting for her bodyguards to like jump out at her like they normally would. We see this overwhelming happiness appear on Taylor's face, and the only thing that I know how to describe it as is freedom. Taylor is finally free to move exactly as she wants to. So she rips off the bottom part of her dress and starts dancing like nobody's watching. Oh, it makes me genuinely so happy to see her smile like that and, and dance like however she wants to. I also love this very awesome and strange gorilla caveman move that she does with her arms. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it gets me every time. Now here's something I find really interesting. Tell me what you think about it because no one else online has really talked about this or pointed this out. So when she's dancing through the lobby, through all these people, right? Here there's a photo on the wall that a lot of people think is a picture of Katy Perry. I personally don't think that that's a picture of her. It doesn't really look like her when you really look up close, but comment down below, let me know if you think it is. But it is at this particular part that I find something really strange and interesting. Go to one minute and 40 seconds in the video and you'll see that Taylor Swift starts dancing in the middle of two women who appear to be fighting, like a scream fighting match almost. These two girls are kind of yelling at each other and then another woman walks up and continues to yell kind of over Taylor. But I don't know why no one else is talking about this because this sticks out to me. Why would Taylor tell these extras to act out a screaming fight? Does that mean something? Is that supposed to symbolize fighting in real life? I don't know. We all know that Taylor Swift puts things in her videos for a reason. Like, what is she trying to tell us? So I wonder what this reason is here, because this stuck out to me. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. The song continues, she sings You Must Like Me For Me, and she's doing these cute little ballet moves, and it's, oh, it just makes me so happy because this is her. This is her true self. She's dancing exactly how she wants to dance. In this scene, she's dancing in front of the hotel lobby, and if you zoom in on the laptop, it says Hotel Delicat, because Taylor Swift always has to include something about cats in her videos. <laughs> Found it. I also love when she marches on the desk like she doesn't give an F about anything. She's gonna march on that desk without shoes on because she can. <laughs> She's invisible Taylor. She does what she wants. She could probably do that if she wasn't invisible, but whatever. Then we see her giving the crazy bellboy a little shame on you finger shake before she bounces back into her happy self, continues to dance. She prances into an elevator and then it seems like she might be ready to be seen again at this point in the video. She's standing in front of a woman who's smiling at her and she's like, oh, okay, so someone can finally see me again. And then this woman starts to put on lipstick red lipstick mind you definitely on purpose this woman starts to put on lipstick through her signaling to Taylor that nope you're still invisible Taylor has this sad look on her face that says yes okay I'm invisible and I get to be myself but maybe this is more lonely than I thought it would be maybe I'm ready to be myself around other people or another person the mood of the video definitely shifts when she's dancing in the subway. The smile she had before when she was dancing has left her face. Okay, now I want to talk to you about the graffiti on the wall that says track 5. Because there's actually a lot of meaning behind this. If you're a longtime Swifty like me, then you're probably familiar with the track 5 theory. This theory states that track 5 of each of Taylor Swift's album is a really, really emotional track where she puts it all out there and is really very vulnerable. On her debut album, it was Cold As You. On Fearless, it was White Horse. On Speak Now, it was Dear John. On Red, it was All Too Well. On 1989, it was All You Had To Do Was Stay. And on Reputation, it's Delicate. There's even a Reddit thread called Suffering From Track 5 Syndrome. <laughs> Oh, the internet. Now getting back to this insanely interesting 15 Taylors theory, because 
after seeing this video, I definitely think it fits. There is a theory out there that the 15 Taylors at the end of the Look What You Made Me Do music video represent the 15 songs from the Reputation album in some way. And this would make Delicate the Fearless era Taylor, which I totally agree with. In Fearless, she says, I don't know why, but with you in a storm, I dance in my best dress Fearless, which is what she's doing in this whole video. This particular Taylor in the Look What You Made Me Do music video also starts crying, which in my mind solidifies that track five is always an emotional one. Whew, this theory always takes me for a loop because I still have so many questions regarding the rest of the track list, but damn, it's a good theory. Because then that means that Gorgeous matches up with the Met Gala Taylor, which is supposedly when she met Joe for the first time, supposedly. Ugh, my mind, so many questions. And since Taylor Swift liked this particular theory on Tumblr, to me that means that there's some truth in it. But man, you Swifties are clever for figuring that one out. Woo, proud of you. Back to the video. Now she's on the subway getting a little too close to the floor for my liking. Looks kind of gross, but you know, whatever. And then we get to one of my favorite parts of the video. Her dancing in the rain and splashing in puddles gave me some serious Gene Kelly vibes from Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain is a romantic comedy from 1952. And in this particular scene, Gene Kelly just left Debbie Reynolds' doorstep after giving her a goodnight kiss. And Gene Kelly's character was so elated that he got a goodnight kiss that he opted to walk home in the rain instead of taking a taxi home. It then turns into this iconic Singing in the Rain scene that we all know and love. And in it, Gene Kelly is splashing in puddles and singing about how he's laughing at the clouds and how he's ready for love. I'm not sure if she meant to emulate this scene, but it does kind of fit perfectly, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? I do feel like in my heart that Taylor Swift would be one to really enjoy romantic comedies from the 50s. Don't ask me why. I just feel like she enjoys old movies. Let me know what you think about that one. And then next, she does a very impressive split on a car that's kind of mind-blowing when you think about how many times she probably had to do that scene for the cameras. Props to you, girl. That might have hurt. <laughs> and we can't forget the small little things that she included on the walls here in this scene. If you look very closely in the background, it says Joe's Deli. We can also see graffiti that says it's delicate, reputation, and echoes of your footsteps on the walls. Honestly, I feel like in this one, Taylor didn't want to include as many hidden messages as she did before. I feel like she wanted her video and the dancing to kind of speak for itself in a different way, rather than include graffiti messages like the last few videos we've seen. Now we see barefoot and dripping wet Taylor Swift and enter a bar on the east side of LA called the Golden Gopher. Get it? Golden? Deep blue, but you painted me golden? Good one, Taylor. She seems to be holding up the glittering note, possibly wishing for something, maybe wishing to be seen again? That's what I think it is. And then lo and behold, we see this line of people sitting at the bar, all turn to kind of recognize her and stare right at her. Clearly, she's not invisible anymore. And then in Taylor's eyes, we see her frantically searching around the room until at last her eyes settle on something or someone. And then she gives us the cutest smile we've ever seen. <laughs> to me, it's obvious that her love, Joe, gave her this note at the beginning of the video. And he was like, come meet me at this dive bar on the east side, meet me in the back, I'll be waiting for you. And she finally finds him and all is well in the world again. Her sweet smile at the end is also a really lovely juxtaposition from the first shot that we saw of her. In the first shot of the video, she looks sad and bored and zoned out. And in the last scene, she is smiling the most purest of smiles because she's finally found the guy that she's been looking for. Yay! I mean, look at that smile. That is pure joy, folks. This ending scene also brings my mind back to Call It What You Want when she says they fade to nothing when I look at him. In the bar, she's like, I could care less what any of these strangers think of me, sopping wet, celebrity or not. When I look at you, they all fade away. Another thing this ending scene reminds me of is a different song that Taylor wrote but Calvin Harris produced, the song This Is What You Came For. She says, and everybody's watching her, but she's only looking at you. That's where my mind went. I don't know if she meant to do something like that, but I wanted to throw it your way and see what you thought. What's so cool about this video is that when I feel like her fans watched it, they could see themselves in it. Dancing around like no one's watching with the funkiest dance moves that you can think of. My mind kind of goes to, all right, Taylor got this note when she was at a really boring press event and she read this note and it's kind of like that feeling of when your crush text messages you or wants to hang out with you, you just like, you can't do anything but dance around your room like an idiot and it's just, that to me is the kind of dancing that I got from her video. She's just like, ha, ah, I don't care if it's raining or not. I'm just prancing and I'm happy about it. <laughs> also, everyone has been messaging me telling me that they think that this guy looks like Joe in the video. Guys, come on now. 
Why would Joe be behind the bar? That's clearly the bartender. Joe is not in this music video as much as we'd like to think he is, literally. He's in it figuratively and metaphorically. I mean, maybe he was even on set with Taylor while she filmed this to kind of get that eye line correct and have it be as real as possible. You never know. Tumblr user Stolen Kisses Pretty Lies said, I just like to point out that the only time she doesn't force a smile in the beginning of the video is when she's with us because she knows that she can always be herself with us. So true. It's clear that the love that Taylor Swift has for her fans is the real deal. And I just love that. Oh, I love that she's seen my video. That's crazy. She could also be watching this one. That's insane to me. Hi, Taylor. You're amazing. I love you. Can't wait to see you in May. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I hope that wasn't too much for you guys. I hope I covered everything. I think I did. I feel like this is gonna be a longer video than normal, but I'm excited to get it to you guys. I'm excited to know what you think. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Please comment down below. My favorite part is reading your comments and knowing what you think. There's a lot of stuff to comment on here. Like that whole fighting scene with the extras fighting above Taylor. Why is no one talking about this? So I would love to know your thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to leave it a like and and share it with your friends and just let me know what you thought of it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and subscribe to my second channel, my vlog channel. I'll be editing a ton of videos for that. I'm also going to be announcing something very special that I'm gonna be doing with my extra reputation tour ticket. So stay tuned for that. You'll wanna be following me on social media to make sure you know as soon as I announce it. I'm excited for that. The stoke is real, folks. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye. She's dancing in the rain and splashing in pubble, pubbles, pubbles? What is a pubble? Gene Kelly, God. Gene Kelly just left Denny, <laughs> words. Gene Kelly just left, <laughs> these are just noises to me now. Ooh.